we've had to have a take two. <laughs> we just, the thing wasn't recording. That reminds me of Julie and uh, Brandy when they did their very first podcast <laughs> on dumb gay politics, which is so hilarious. You have to watch it. They went down to the studio with all this equipment and they taped the whole show to find out it wasn't recording. That's us today. So we're going to talk about Housewives, our favorite shows that are on TV right now, Colors and Trends. Oh, I just came back from Orlando. I've got so much gossip from there. I spent three days with the Queen of Versailles. If you haven't seen the Queen of Versailles film, it won the film festival at Sundance and it's hilarious. She's hilarious. I spent three days hanging out with her with doing we're doing some projects together. I'm going to be in LA next week, so it'll be 9 o'clock Central, but it'll still be noon Eastern, so you better show up for my LA uh, show. <laughs> Let me see who I can drag over at 9 in the morning to talk to me. Uh, health and beauty tips. Don't look at my nails, being of health and beauty. Yesterday, I could not make it to the salon. So poor Tony, he did try to fluff up this horrible hair, but it's just a mess today. I'm just a mess. <laughs> uh, oh, I put the alleged sign up because James is in here today. And just in the event I say anything that I shouldn't, just remember that it's allegedly or probably allegedly or definitely <laughs> allegedly. New York Housewives start tonight. I bet Andy Cohen's got all excited today. You know, that's his pet baby. And, uh, oh, Jacqueline Larita and Chris... Um, Manzo were in town this weekend or this week or today and yesterday or whatever on some project. They have the most delicious popcorn, by the way. And they reached out to me and somehow we've missed each other and I would have loved to have seen them or had them come over, buy them drinks. I think they're just a lovely couple. So don't forget next week, LA, let's start with Beverly Hills. Oh my God. So Rena says Dorit's hair looks like a big gold Goose took a big poop on her head. <laughs> and she says she prefers the pink cotton candy hair that um, Erica has over the golden goose poop hair. Oh my God, she's just so funny. She is Forrest Gump. She just keeps stepping in it and stepping in it. What she does, she goes and she stirs up drama. She gets herself in a hole. She stirs up another drama. She stirs up another drama. And then before you know it, somehow she wiggles her way out and she gets out of it and she comes out on top. I mean, she just really is Forrest Gump. <laughs> oh my God! She and then oh, and then also when Erica said, "Well, Lisa Vanderpump is obsessed with my pussy, and everybody knows it." I think all that started with the pussy parade, and then the pussy gate. I mean, then the pink pussy hairs, and everything's pink and pussy this year. Um, and then the wrath of Rena says Durrett. Well, hello, Durrett. If that's the wrath, oh my God! You've lived a protected life, girl. And then what about those cute little ponies that are going around, you know, <laughs> RJ? Lisa Vanderpump says that she wants to have us and RJ come over and see their little zoo and all that stuff. And my son has asked me 20 times, Mom, when are we going to see the ponies? But when we're in L.A., everybody's so busy, we just haven't made the time. But I am going to go see, was it uh, Hanky and Panky or Diamonds and Rosé or I forget their <laughs> Thank names. You, Panky. I think that's their names. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so then Lisa Vanderpump, she is clever. She says, well, if Rena can just keep her lips closed and Erica can keep her legs closed, maybe we can all start to get along. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question from Ryan okay. regarding the housewives. Do you think PK was being misogynistic when speaking to the ladies? No! PK, you know what, if people call you honey or baby or whatever, people make too much of everything. You can't be that politically correct all the time. He was just kept, when you notice when he talked to someone else, he called them honey. When he talked to someone else, he called them honey. He just called them honey. You know, babes, honey, I don't think so. PK, trust me, PK is going to be one holding the diamond next year and it's going to be the friend. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Oh, Lord. And then um, Rena is like, well, what did, uh, what did I ever do? You know, what did I ever do? And everyone's coming at her, coming at her, coming at her. And at the very end, she goes, look, who's next? Who's next? Because Forrest Gump falling into another drama trap and then getting her way out of it. And then she comes out on top again. Oh, Lord. What else? Oh, and then what is this? Social cues. People aren't watching their social cues. Well, that's going to become part of the vernacular now that Erica said it. And uh, I loved it when PJ went and jumped in. I mean, the other women were like, well, my husband wouldn't. Well, my husband wouldn't. Well, who cares what your husband would do? PK's just cutest thing. I think he's just cute. And uh, then Lisa Vanderpump starts yelling, and they're saying, don't yell, don't yell. It's just like 
can yell if I want to. Her idea of yelling is my idea of talking. But it's her party. She can yell if she wants to. Oh, let's see what else. Don't call me honey. Don't call me honey. Well, just call me honey bunch. Well, better than calling it pussy. Oh, my God. And then Erica's got that diamond Cartier ring, which is spectacular, by the way. I've seen that ring. I've tried that ring on. I almost bought that ring. The only thing is... I wear, have so many rings that I'm out of fingers to spend that much money on another ring. But she says the horse wants that ring. I'm like, honey, if that horse bites that ring off, I'm going to be looking for the poop. <laughs> <laughs> I will find that ring and the poop. Uh, find her snippers. Oh, and then Durrett and Erica kissed and made up. But then in the very end, I, I was shocked. Now, either Sassoon is really upset and mad and angry and yelling and screaming, or she's wanting to get on next season, or both. But she went at everybody, and I think Eileen made a very good point. I do think that she may feel that she's not being heard, because there are a lot of big mouths in that crowd, and they're all, have, they're all alpha women, they all have big, you know, personalities, and she's just kind of quiet over there doing her yoga. But she, by the way, honey, Trust me, I've had a modeling agency. I've been in the beauty business my whole life. I've done a thousand photo shoots. I know I've done, written a book on hair and makeup. I'm going to tell you, do not wear your hair down again, ever. <laughs> ever. You have beautiful bone structure, beautiful shoulders, beautiful face, beautiful skin. Wear your hair back. You look elegant and fabulous. When you wear it down, you look like just another ex-housewife on walking Rodeo Drive with the big lips. <laughs> okay, now, ro, ro, what is it called? The uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Oh, something that was just that. The old lady gang opened up. I'd love to go and eat that food. You know that's got to be delicious. <laughs> I love Southern food. And then Kenya has put a restraining order on Matt, a temporary restraining order. Well, finally, hello, I, I hope you're taking my advice. I mean, we know she didn't get it from me, but I did tell her that. <laughs> and then, oh, Apollo has got a girlfriend who lives in New Jersey who, happened to, who wanted to show up for him to represent him at the party that's being televised. Uh, yeah, honey, we're <laughs> on to you. <laughs> Having said that, and by the way, that is a little slap in the face to Phaedra, and I will acknowledge Candy for having Phaedra's back, even though Phaedra doesn't usually take, have Candy's back, but I will say this. When you're in jail, you need a lifeline. So if this little girl can trot over there and visit him in jail and give him something to look forward to and keep him at least calmed down over a period of his jail sentence, good for her. I mean, I have notebooks of people I've written in jails. There was one guy that was in jail that was a lawyer in Miami. He went to jail for three years, and the only, he couldn't get, he likes to read, he couldn't get hardback books. So I sent him three paperback books every single week, which was the maximum that they could get, for three years. That's a lot of paperback books. I stole most of them from Roy. He never missed them. <laughs> he has so many damn books. It's crazy. But, you know, my son and I used to go visit people in jail. And one time we, we flew to Orlando, drove two or three hours, and he was like eight or nine years old. I said, RJ, you're going to be hungry when, you, you know, when we get there. And we're out in the country, so you better eat now. No, Mom, I'm not hungry. Well, you're going to be hungry when you get there. He goes, Mommy, I'm not hungry yet. I said, okay. Well, I knew you could take $6 in and buy from the vending machine. So sure enough, we drive up, and he goes, Mom, I'm starving all of a sudden. I said, I oh, have $6 you can send in the, in the vending machine. That's all they allow. That's all they allow, Mom? I'm really hungry. So we get in there, and then he meets the guy that's in jail that we go to visit. The little thing went and put his $6 in the vending machine and got this little pizza and something else. He came back, he started asking for a knife. I'm like, they don't have any knives in prison. <laughs> but he finds a plastic knife, and he takes his pizza that's this big, and he spends five minutes cutting it with this really oh. horrible knife. I'm like, what is he doing? He usually just gobbles it up. As soon as he cut it, he gave the guy in jail oh. half of it and ate the other half. It broke my heart because I knew he was oh. starving. <laughs> Poor little thing. Sure. So you got to have empathy for people in prison. You know, I mean, it's not good. You shouldn't do good, bad things. But if you're there, you still should have a quality of life because otherwise you come out better and just do more crimes. That's why we do our charity all these years. Oh, I'm so old. Okay. <laughs> the Royal Housewives of New York taglines. 
Sonia's my favorite. Of course, Sonia's my favorite girl in New York. I've known her for so many years. I think the first time I met her was at the Cannes Film Festival before RJ was born, but I've always loved her. She's got the biggest heart. And she's, her tagline is, there's nothing gray about my gardens. That's cute, isn't it? The little double entendre there. If you don't get it, fine. If you do, fine. Tensley Mortimer, the new girl, apparently she was arrested once for a DUI. So I guess she's going to make, you know, when you have a negative, make a highlight out of it. Hers is, a good set of lashes can fix anything, even a mugshot. <laughs> tell you, my husband's a criminal defense attorney, he does tell people, if you have to go down to do a mugshot, at least look fine and smile and be happy because you don't want them posting one of those Gary Busey mugshots at nauseum for the rest of your life. So that's my little free advice for you, my free tip. If you ever get arrested, look happy in your mugshot. No one alone, it's a mugshot. You can always crop out the number. Oh, uh, let's see. Bethany, if you're going to take a shot at B, you better not miss. <laughs> Well, okay. okay. Ramona. Now, I've also known Ramona for years. I met her through Jason Ben. We had dinner one night at something, and then I met her in the Hamptons a couple of times. I love Ramona. She goes, I'm an acquired taste. If you don't like me, acquire some taste. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, Luann. The only title I trade Countess for is wife. That's good. And I'm glad you're trading it. That's really warm, that Countess thing. We have worn that out. Move on. Dorinda, I'll tell it like it is, but I always make it nice. All right. Carol Radzewell. Oh, this little pol political dig here. In the politics of friendship, I won the popular vote. I win the popular vote. Okay. okay. Not bad. Oh, my God. I'm watching Feud. Who's watching Feud? I love it. That's with uh, Betty Davis and uh, Joan Crawford, you know, my Mommy Dearest. Oh, if you watch that Brilliant. movie or that film, or now the series Feud, and I read the Mommy Dearest book, and then I saw the movie about Mommy Dearest, and she's always, Joan Crawford's always been portrayed so awful. But when you watch this, it, it, you see it's just such an empathetic tragedy i mean it's this woman that was so beautiful and and she worked so hard and women had to work 10 times harder than men then and even then they didn't get paid the same which they still don't and they couldn't get parts and they're getting older and in today's world as women get older they get character roles but back then as they got older they didn't get anything so these two women are struggling to stay in the field of acting now you get the sense that bet uh, what's her name uh Joan is in it, Joan Crawford, it's kind of an ego and she likes to be, you know, recognized when she walks in a room and fabulous. Whereas Betty Davis, you get the feeling she just wants to continue working as an artist and, and her craft. But it was, it's such a good show if you haven't seen it. I don't even remember what network it's on. But anyway, the best line to me was when um, the record, the, the gossip writer for one of the tabloids there says, hypocrisy is the tribute vice must pay to virtue. <laughs> I love that line so much. I always would have thought of it. And then one of uh, Joan Crawford's lifelong friends, a man, comes up to her when she was not nominated for Who's Afraid of Baby Jane, or what is it, whatever the name is. And No, it's not Who's Afraid, it's Baby Jane, whatever it was. And the... Um, and he comes up to her because Betty was nominated for Best Actress, Betty Davis, and he says, now listen, Joan, I've been your friend all your life, and as your friend, I'm telling you, do not try to steal the limelight from her tonight. You're going to look petty. And so she's over there quaffing her hair, and she walks right up to him, and she goes, well, uh, he goes, don't steal the limelight, you'll look petty. And, she, and he, she says, no, I'm afraid it's not petty, and I'm not about <laughs> so she decides she's going to be Patty. And she did steal the limelight. She worked it like a hooker in church. She went around to the actresses that were nominated and convinced them not to show up. She would accept on their behalf. And she got to accept one. And she stood there with the trophy like she wanted. I was like, this woman knows all about perception versus reality. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> Betty, and then Betty Davis is, when she's being uh, interviewed on the red carpet, says, well, I'm not afraid to admit that I want this Oscar, you know, I'm like, and then Joan's on the red carpet, and there, there's such a feud between them, and so they go to Joan and say, well, Joan, who did you vote for? So everybody's like, 
my God, is she going to admit she didn't vote for Betty? Or is she going to say she voted for and lied? Because you know she's lobbying for her not to win. And Joan goes, well, I voted for the winner. <laughs> Very clever. <laughs> then the finale of The Walking Dead. I like that show. And the reason I like that show is because it's really not about all these monsters and dying and the apocalypse and all that. It's really about human behavior. And it sacrifice, power, you know, community, camaraderie, survival, cruelty. And you get to see what people are made of. You get to see people that will sacrifice really their life to save hundreds of other lives or their friends' lives. Those that are greedy will steal and, and, and take and hide food in their room. Those that will, you know, take leaders, followers. It's just, I like the, the dynamic of it. But I was sick of it there for a while. It was getting too dark. I think they redeemed themselves at the finale. So I'm watching Big Little, I haven't watched Big Little Lies. I'm taping that, I'm gonna watch it. I heard it's great. I'm watching The Designated Survivor with um, Kiefer Sutherland, I like that. The Walking Dead, Homeland, The Imposters, uh, The Voice, I love The Voice. And um, anyway, The Homeland is scary this year because they've got those boiler rooms of people creating fake news and I'm like, oh, were they psychic or did they have someone working for the CIA? So I get my best gossip from reality TV, Real Mr. Housewife, Prez Hilton, and uh, the Juicy Coop podcast with Heather McDonald. And then I found this new one I'm getting it from is Fit, Fat, Fib, and Fat, Fit, and Fun. It's a really good <laughs> one. Uh, but by the way, I'm speaking of where I get my news from. Ross Matthews is in town this week with the Gay Pride, and I emailed him and told him, "I let's hook up. I'm not going to be here this weekend, but I want to see you before." And, he didn't email me back yet. <laughs> Ross, you've got a problem. <laughs> and then, of course, Dumb Gay Politics, the podcast with Julie and Brandy. It's a fresh perspective. It's in your face. It's humorous. It's all about politics. It's not what you think it's gonna, it is. And you can catch it on www.acast.com slash Dumb Gay Politics. But those were the girls from the People's Couch, and they're friends of mine. I see them whenever I'm in L.A., and we laugh. The three of us laugh literally until everybody's mascara is running, except Julie, she doesn't wear mascara. <laughs> so my queen of her side trip to Orlando. Okay, if you haven't met Jackie, here's Jackie. Now get ready for this. This is the limo she rides around town in. It's hilarious, I just love it. And then she stands up and the, she, at the stop sign, she takes the top down and stands up and waves like to the fans. I'm like, you gotta wave like this. Wave to the commenters, Jackie. I love her and her husband. They are so much fun. Now this is a chair that she has in her house that I thought, you know, I just need a crown and I need this in the office. I mean, this is just me. I need this chair. <laughs> Doesn't that look like me? I'm sad. <laughs> and then I gave her this book <laughs> called My Private. Uh, my Privates are private. It's, a, it's my friend uh, wrote it, uh, Stacy Honowitz. She's a, a lawyer. It's teaching kids about letting people touch them and this and that. So I said, Jackie, take a picture with my friend's book. I'm going to send it to her for the fun of it. And she says, she's such a good support. She's oh, of course I will. Anyway, I like the book. So there you go. Oh, questions. What do you think of the Australian Housewives? Have you watched either that one or Melbourne or Sydney? I haven't watched any. I can't even keep up with the ones I'm watching, but I would like to watch them, I just can't. Are you friends with any of the other Housewives on the shows? Oh, well, Brenna, Vanderpump. I was friends with Brandy till she got mad about my <laughs> me, about the twat. Um, Sonia, Ramona. Oh, remember that Kat Omani from uh, DC? Kathy Wakili, Jacqueline, I don't know a few. I know, but none of them, I, I didn't meet any of these girls through the shows. I somehow met them before they were on the show or before I was on the show in other settings. So it's very kind of weird. Small world, isn't it? Now, I have to tell you this because I think it's the funniest thing I have read in a long time. People are crazy. <laughs> People are just nuts. <laughs> nuts. This French, art, French artist is doing a hatching of a dozen eggs. <laughs> he is going, this is his new performance piece in Paris called The Egg. Now this is him sitting on a bunch of eggs, <laughs> trying to hatch them. Do not look at my nails, it makes a lot. Trying to hatch these eggs. And so 
first of all, a man should never try to do a woman's job. Let's we'll start there. But I'm sitting there going, how in the hell is he sitting on those eggs without breaking them? And what's the point? You're gonna so you're gonna, you're gonna hatch a dozen eggs as a French artist? Who wants to hatch a dozen eggs? This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But it's only in France. Now, what are you gonna do with the eggs if you hatch them? Are you gonna then you're gonna have to sit the rest of your life on the on the little chicken eggs so you can hatch them, and then the grandchildren's eggs and hatch them. And he's in a he's in a glass box that's completely climate controlled. And I'm like, what hell is he sitting on the eggs without breaking them? So now I start reading the order further. Now look at this. Look at this. This are how the eggs are underneath his ass. They're in a little petri tray or whatever, and he's sitting on there. I mean, how does he go to the bathroom? I mean, does he get up and go? I mean, does he put a... Uh, I, I can't. I, people are just too much. I would love much, it. Too much. Oh, oh remember God. I told you about the fit, bad, bit, and fun? Uh, new my thing I recently found. This is what they're saying is... Uh, look at this. Who has the most bold color of hair you've ever tried? Okay, this is like a rose gold. But look at these. This one just cracks me up. People actually do this to their hair. Who does that to their hair? I mean, would you do this to your hair? I mean, well, Adam Levine did it his hair on The Voice, so that's <laughs> that. This is in where they're doing the purples and the blues, and this one, look, they got, it's like the rainbow. They got all the colors of the rainbow right here on their hair. Tony, get out the spray paint <laughs> and the silver thing. And then apparently, uh, oh, I've got to show you this because we're gonna have to go in a minute. I cannot not do this one. Another one, another bright idea. Oh Lord, people, people have lost it. This is called the penis seat. P e n i s. <laughs> Translation: the dick seat. The capital of Mexico says that it's the worst city for sexual harassment. So they have come up with the No Es de Hombres campaign, <laughs> and they are putting this on the buses in Mexico to remind people of sexual violence that women suffer on a daily basis in order to generate empathy for men. And the sign, that's what the science is. This is the seed on the bus <laughs> with oh, a penis. Wow. What the hell? Some drug addict, somebody's on me on coke one night or whatever they take, <laughs> what do they take, LSD? And they're they're going to go start having sex with a damn penis. I mean, what's wrong with people? Oh, my God, how much time do we have? Oh, I did that one. Okay, oh, my God, we're down. Oh, we're down to two minutes. I'll leave you with this. Oh, but by the way, Adele says she doesn't want to do her tour anymore. She has stage fright, and she feels vulnerable. Well, that's terrible. But, you know, Barbara Streisand went through that for a while, and then she came back. And then apparently there's a conspiracy theory going around that Tom Cruise is interested in that girl that plays Victoria on The Crown. But then there's another rumor going around that says that he auditions women before oh. he dates them. I don't know. I don't in audition friends. I don't find that out of character. And... Just to be careful, safety note, I've been telling people this forever. I tell my son this every day. When you're walking down the street, there was 11% increase in the number of pedestrians killed on the U.S. roads in 2016 compared to the year before. I see these idiots lollygagging down. They're just lollygagging down the street, and they got their headsets on, and they're looking down, and they're typing, and they're, or they're on the phone, and they never even look in one direction to the other to find out if anybody's going to run them over. And I tell my son, when you're at a stoplight, when you're at a crosswalk, you step back three or four feet from the curb because some idiot's going to swerve over because they're also texting and not paying attention to what they're doing. So I'm telling you, I've been telling people about this, and I, now I read 11% more people died in 2016 than the year before, pedestrians, because they're not paying attention. So I'll leave you on something fabulous, my quote of the day. My quote of the week that I wrote, laughter is the best revenge. <laughs> I like that one. And my beauty tip, oh, every day drink warm water with apple cider vinegar and a little bit of maple syrup. And it'll help detox. It'll help balance your pH. It'll make you look good, feel good, and give you energy. That's my show this week. Is everybody happy? Yay! Yay! Okay, I'll see you next week from Los Angeles. Tune in at noon, Facebook Live, Lunch with Leah. Get out your popcorn.